Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, all the heads went. Oh. <laughs> it's lovely to see you all here this morning. Um, you're very welcome. Our service is being led this morning by uh, Peter Gibson. He's a good friend to us. He's been here several times before. I'm sure you all recognise him. And if you, if you don't, you soon, when he starts talking, you soon will, because he's funny. So, <laughs> in the best possible way. No, he, he does tell me off, so that I'm waiting for I'm waiting for it to come back in a minute. <laughs> okay, right. So uh, this morning is a communion service. Everyone is welcome to take part in communion with us. If you didn't pick up your bread and your, uh, it's not actually wine; it's grape juice. But <laughs> well, um, as you came in, then perhaps during one of the hymns, you could just go and and get it for yourself, so that you have it for when the time comes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now, um, we have a very important meeting this afternoon, don't we, those of you that know. Last week, our service was led by uh, Joe Regan, who is considering becoming the next pastor here at Pier Avenue. And uh, this afternoon, those of you that are church members are coming along at three o'clock, where we will have a, a, a meeting to, to vote, because as you know, in the Baptist tradition, it's the church members that make that decision. Then what will happen is, uh, then we will let uh, Jo know what happens, and then she also has a decision to make, okay? So we'll see what happens this afternoon, and then we'll take it from there, and I'll inform you all as soon as we know anything that's definite and fixed. Okay, so that's three o'clock this afternoon in the atrium, church members for a, a, a voting meeting and a, and a cup of tea as well, so that we can have a chat. Okay. Uh, now, during next week, uh, next week is Remembrance Sunday, so as our Girls Brigade parade down at the seafront with all the other uniformed organisations, there won't be any Sunday school that, that, that next week, but you're all still very welcome to come uh, to the service, it will just be here as normal, there might just be a few less people. Okay, now I gave out this what's on over the next few weeks a while back. Since I gave that out, Girls' Brigade have changed the time of their quiz. So the, quiz, the Girls' Brigade quiz on the 2nd of December, for which I believe the tickets are available today. Is that correct? Okay, so if you want to come to the Girls' Brigade quiz night on the 2nd of December, you can get your tickets from Girls' Brigade leaders. Has Jill got some, Jill? Elaine has, I'm sure. Yeah, Elaine. Elaine's the one, okay? Uh, it's now going to start at six o'clock. So if you've got my old version of this and you turn up at seven, I'll be, I'll be very sorry, but I, couldn't, I didn't know at the time. So I've done a new one. They're at the back. So if you've got one, take another one and throw the other one away, okay? Because the time's changed. Okay. Now, also, last thing from me, I think, we did say that there are no deacons coming to the end of their terms of office this year. However, if you wanted to, if it was on your heart and God had laid it on your heart to propose someone else for the diaconate, this is your last week to do this. There are the forms at the back. The person needs to have been a church member for six months and obviously they need to agree. So if you, if you think that is what you should be doing then today is your last chance to do it, please fill in the form and give it back to me. Okay, now, thing is, hopefully, I've done everything I can, I stood up here to do. If I've forgotten anything, please shout at me. Now, as you know, offering, please, Casey. As you know, we no longer pass offering bags around here, so offerings are put in the boxes at the back of the church as you come in or as you leave, um, or through the bank in other ways, and we still need to offer this to God and give thanks to him for uh, that which, you, which is provided. So, thank you. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you give to us. We have so much, Lord. We offer you this back and that which is given in other ways for your service so that your work here can grow and more people may come to know about you. In the name of Jesus, we offer it. Amen. Thank you, Casey. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Peter now. Sorry I took so long. Good morning. That's quite a 
introduction that I am funny. Uh, In a good way. I don't know whether it's a challenge or a curse. <laughs> ah, someone's laughed, so that's okay. I know that's not on. We can't hear you. You can't hear me, why not? No, I don't know. Is the one, if you clipped your microphone on. That's working. Go back to this, Chris. I prefer that. Old story, haven't you, where some where the the preacher says, Can you hear me? And one of the congregation says, yes, but I'll gladly move to where somebody can't. <laughs> See, I told you it was funny. <laughs> Goodbye. You were right. Yeah, fine. They'll sort it, but I'll put it, I'll put it in. Okay. It's out your way. Like getting dressed for a wedding. <laughs> anyway, good morning. morning. It's good to be back with you. I think it was May I was here, was it? May yeah, time, exactly. about May time, right. Lots of things have happened, and I'm sure lots of things have happened in your lives, but the, uh, the question is, have you sensed that God has been with you? And there's times we don't, you know. There's times we actually feel that God has forgotten all about us, and that's quite normal. And then we suddenly realize he's been there all the time. And I hope that you have a greater sense of God being with you all the time. We're here to worship Jesus. We're here to do everything and anything to thank him for dying on the cross and for being our Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus this morning personally, I would really invite you to zone into what is happening through the whole service and ask the question, why don't I believe in Jesus now? And the simple prayer is, Lord Jesus, help me to believe in you. Come, come into my life. That's what it's all about. You don't have to sign anything. You don't have to give a thousand pound a week to the church, but it would help. <laughs> and uh, that's good. We're going to start off with uh, some songs I believe you know, or at least one song. And uh, it talks about praise is rising. In our first church, we had a lot of West Indian folk. And I really miss West Indian folk. I've now got African folk. They're lovely, but they're not West Indian. <laughs> And uh, this lady, Grandma Myrtle, used to tell me that back home, she lived the furthest away from the church. And she would start walking to the church. And then other people would join her. And they would be walking. And as the numbers grew, so they would be starting to sing and sing worship songs and the numbers would grow, and they would keep on singing worship songs. And as they entered the church, they were all singing worship songs, and the band just joined in, and they sung for half an hour of worship songs. And she said, oh, I do miss that. But, but as they entered, praise was rising and they knew what it was to praise and worship God. Let's take these words into our hearts as we sing together, praise is rising. Thank you.
please be seated. Are you typically British and reserved? Or can you relax and do something? Yes, we can. We're going to find out. <laughs> when somebody important turns up, we normally go, oh, and we clap, don't we? We're going to do that now. It's probably the first and only time you're going to do it, and Karen doesn't have to ask me back. That's fine. <laughs> right? I win. <laughs> but we've just said, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. Did we just sing it or did we mean it? We meant it. Right, well, Jesus is walking in now by the power of his Holy Spirit. And we're going to say as a congregation, we welcome you, Lord Jesus, and we're going to applaud him. Is that okay? Yes. Didn't matter if you said no, but we're still going to do it. <laughs> right? But we have to focus our minds. Some 20 odd years ago, I was in Toronto listening to the pastor speak. And he said, the problem that blessings are few in churches is that the women are thinking, have I put the meat in? Oh, I must stop on the way home and buy a pint of milk. And the men are thinking, why am I not getting a good MPG out of my car? And none of us are thinking about welcoming Jesus. And if we want blessing, we have to center on Jesus. So here he comes now. Let's, together, we welcome you, Lord Jesus, and give him a round of applause. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you. Excellent. And I know he feels very welcome. Now let's talk to him in prayer. Lord Jesus, you are so welcome here. We are here to bless you and praise you. We are here to say thank you for your ministry on earth. Thank you for the ministry of the cross and resurrection. Thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the ministry of your intercessions in heaven on our behalf. Thank you that one day the Father will say, Son, it is time to return to earth. Thank you that for those, of you, uh, for those of us who know you, love you, and follow you, there is an eternity to be grasped. There is a wonder ahead. There are things we cannot even imagine at the moment. They're going to be so amazing. Father, help us to focus in on your Son. Help us to love him, worship him, talk to him daily, follow him, and his teachings. Oh, Father, we're so pleased that by the Spirit of God you are here in Jesus' name. May we know your presence personally. We ask this in Jesus' powerful and special name. Amen. I would normally do the Lord's Prayer there, but in the early church, what they did was after servings and sharing communion, they would then say the Lord's Prayer. That's where we're going to do it this morning. In tune with the ancient church of 2,223, or oh, there about years ago. Now, I've brought a song for those who are under 106. Is anybody here over 106? What are you doing pointing at her for? <laughs> you? You don't look a day over 105. <laughs> Sorry. Now it's called All Through History. We may do this twice, we'll see. The first time we're gonna stay there, and then the second time we do it, I'm hoping that someone can invent some actions right i haven't got any with you with me but i'm going to step down here before i fall off and uh, if the youtube man can do it there that's the first few words of the first verse so we're going to stand 
And what you've got to do is stand absolutely rigid, don't clap, don't smile, don't move. You dare try that. Right, stand up. And we're going to listen to this. It's a song worth, listen, uh, worth learning. Let's go for it. Noah built the most enormous boat They kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him
Well, looking around, that's an extra 45 minutes on the sermon. In fact, we might finish just before the church meeting. Didn't think it was that funny, but nevertheless. Right, our children and young people are going to be leaving us now, I believe, and uh, let's pray for them. Father, thank you that we have the privilege of having uh, young people with us of all ages. Father, I pray, we pray, that you would be good to them, speak to them, teach them life lessons, and teach them the lessons from your word. May they fall in love with Jesus. In his name I ask it. Amen. So whoever's going, There's normally more teachers than there are children. Oh, look at them all. Good morning. Good morning. Now make a lot of noise out there, won't you? Wake this crowd up. Lovely. It's really good to be with you. My wife apologizes she can't be here. Our youngest daughter has left her dogs with us for the weekend, and one of them is a working Cocker Spaniel, and he can't really be left without destroying the house. So she took the, the better part of Valor, and uh, she stayed to watch the dog. But she'd much, like, much more prefer to be here. Our next song, I haven't got many today, that was the second one. I haven't got many for a purpose because we'll see what that is later. It centers on basically who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus just a name? I hope he's not just an expletive. I hope he is a friend, a king, a lord, a savior because the next song has the opening words of my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his righteousness. Looking at the centering of ourselves into the life of Jesus and centering Jesus into our lives. Words that we don't just sing, but we sing into our spirit and we ask Lord God, May these words be true to me. Let's stand and sing. My hope is built on nothing less. Just 
thank you. Do take your seats. And Brian is going to come and read God's Word to us from Philippians. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, one and all. Our reading is from Philippians 2, verses 19 to 30. Timothy and Epaphroditus. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for you all, and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour, people like him. Because he almost died for the work of Christ, he risked his life to make up for the help you yourself could not give me. Thanks be to God for his word, and may we have his understanding. It's good to hear that you are looking at a new pastor. An interregnum can be a joy, a blessing, sometimes a pain. Now there's one thing I need to say, and I would say whether you call this uh, lady or not. When a new pastor turns up, the temptation is to say, Ah, she's here. I can stop doing what I was doing. No, no, no. When she comes, you do more. That's something I'm finding out, having retired. And now I have a lady pastor, and uh, she knows how to make us work. And I look back and think I was far, far too generous. So be prepared. If God is at work, you will know, because he won't let you go to sleep. Amen? That's not very convincing. Be convinced that God needs you to work. Now, we're looking at this, uh, this passage, and there's one word missing, and that's the word I want to speak on this morning. Can we have that one slide up, please? There we go. And I've given two explanations and then the word. The Greek word is koinonia. With me, koinonia. Let me hear you say it, koinonia. And by yourselves. Koinonia. Right, you can now go out and say you speak fluent Greek. Right? It has a number of meanings. The main two are fellowship and encouragement. Encouragement is hinted in this passage. Fellowship is not. By the word, 
but by the context it is. Now, hands up if you have a Bible open in front of you. Thank you, sir. Your name? Jason. Jason. May you go with the Argonauts. <laughs> you know, apart from Jason, I could be preaching out of the fisherman's times and you wouldn't know. God's building holds God's people reading God's Word so God can speak to them. God's, be God's building holds God's people reading God's Word so God can speak to them. With me, God's building holds God's people reading God's Word so God can speak to us. Now by yourself. God's Well done, Karen. <laughs> no, you just have that voice that cuts through the gloom. That right? wonderful. That's why we need to have the Bible. Do you have church Bibles here? I bet they're all brand new. Yes. Right? God's people holding God's, God's church, holding God's people reading God's Word, so God can bless your new pastor, whoever he, she is, that you are seen to be a people of the Word of God. See, fellowship is not a passive word. It's not that somebody else does to you. Now, I'll tell you a, a secret about my wife and I in bed last night. My left shoulder blade became very itchy, and I said, darling, would you just scratch my left shoulder? Oh, yes, there, and a bit more, oh, and down a bit. That's wonderful. That was done to me. I was passive, she was active. <coughs> Fellowship is not passive. Fellowship is you being involved in serving others. It's not just walking into church, singing a few songs, and then, you know, like they do in ice skating, having listened to the sermon, well, I'll give them 5.6. I'll give them 3.4. I've done my duty, I'll go home and forget about church for a week. No, no. We take the Word of God and the essence of God with us into the world that we may show actively what it is like to be in fellowship with Jesus and in fellowship with each other. We're not strangers, we are part of the family. Now, if you are a born-again Christian this morning, I've got something which will either thrill you or scare you rotten. Just look around a second at the people here, right? I know they're an ugly bunch, but don't worry, right? You're going to spend eternity with these people. Day after day after day, they're going to be there with you. So get to know them now. Get to know their highs and lows. Get to know how to fellowship with them, how you can live the Koinonian life, not just here, but 24-7, 365. It's not passive, it's you do fellowship. 1969, I went to university in Durham, and without much thought, I joined the Durham Society. Doesn't that sound posh? I'm a life member of the Durham Society. Turned out it was a debating, a debating society, and guess what? I never ever went and I've never been. But my name is on the list. They could say I am in fellowship with the Durham Society. Am I what? 
Just because my name is on the list doesn't mean to say I'm a part of it. I had to make an effort to go, to learn, to be involved, and I didn't. Here we have a scripture where Paul is talking about people who were involved with people. First bit, I was cheered when I received news of you. They're doing something in Philippi, and that's really blessed Paul. They show genuine concern, and they bless Paul. And then this big sentence, everyone looks out for their own interests, not for the interests of Jesus Christ. Oh, how could he write that? Yes, they were blessing him, but behind the scenes, you know, I don't care about you, you can go home, you smell, you're poor, you're rich, you've got six donkeys, I've only got three, go home. I'm looking after myself, I'm number one. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough, but it's not COVID. I checked three weeks ago. My friend, Epaphroditus, is distressed because he's heard that you were ill and all the things you did to help the people working with me. That's fellowship, that's koinonia, actively involved with each other. It happens here, but what happens when we walk out the doors? Are we, you know, kind of looking to see if anyone can see us and we scoot out carefully so no one knows that I've been to church? Or do we live the life in an intimate relationship with us. Koinonia, the deepest expression of the word, is my fellowship with Jesus and his fellowship with me. Now, I want you to do something. It's very difficult. You ready? I want you to put your fingers like that in a triangle. Now, imagine that you are the bottom left person and somebody else, it could be the person with you or someone you don't like, it doesn't matter, and they are at the bottom right. Now, watch what happens as each of you go up the sides of the triangle. Where do you meet? Sorry? At the top. Oh, now just imagine Jesus is at the top. As you and somebody else grows together in Christ, when you get to the top, that is true fellowship. You, your friend, your husband, your wife, your aunt, your uncle, your child, whoever, that's true fellowship. That's koinonia. And shortly we're going to be having communion, which is the utmost expression of fellowship. That as we sit there with a little bit of bread and a little cup of juice, whatever it is, I've had communion with water and milk. That's not important. What's important is that I and my wife meet together in Christ. You and your fellow church people meet together in Christ around the table. That's koinonia. You've gone and ruined half my sermon by not having a communion table. Oh dear, but not to worry, I can get around it. All right. You see, in this country, because the church has failed, and that's the church in general, people have taken over. In the early church, 
It was the Christians who fed the poor, who looked after the widows, who made certain people had somewhere to build a house, who made certain that folk had money in their pockets. Nowadays, it's down to food banks and charities and very, very good people, but not seeking to do it for Jesus. I don't knock them. Without them, there would be so much pain in this country. That used to be the job of the church. You read in Acts about the, the um, apostles, I see the, the deacons who were working tables and helping people very actively. And then it got less and less. And someone said, nothing's happening. The church has gone to sleep. The church is not interested in us. We must do something. Let's collect the food and feed the hungry. Let's do these marvelous building projects for the disabled and the elderly. Let's do this, let's do that, because the church isn't doing it. Where are you on the triangle of faith? None of us are at the top yet, because we get there in heaven. But are you at the bottom? Have you started? Are you going up? You see, Paul again in Corinthians hits the mark when he said, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. We are in koinonia, we are in fellowship. For we all share one loaf. The picture of Christ at the table saying, you know, I break this bread as a symbol of my body. And elsewhere he says, I am the bread of life. We share in the fellowship with Christ. And he says, quite strangely, knowing the cross is coming, I have eagerly desired to share this Passover with you. He wants to share with his friends. He wants to be in koinonia. He wants to be encouraging. He wants to be in fellowship. Church, this is where we need to be today. I want you to imagine, please, that here is a table and if you go into most Baptist or the churches, there'll be a table with a beautiful white cloth on. There'll be the trays with the wine in, plates with the bread in, and it'll look absolutely special. That's not how it was in Jesus' day. They were having the Passover. There was a group of men around the table. There would be bits of lamb fallen off the plate. There'll be crumbs from the bread. Somebody may have knocked um, the, the wine over. There'd been a lot of talking. There was the bitter herbs that could have been spilt and all the parts of the Passover. It was a messy table. And in this messy table, Jesus takes bread and says, I want to share this as a symbol of my body. And in this messy table, when the Passover's over, he gives them a cup of red wine. In those days, they had three wines, red wine and white wine we know about. Black wine is something you've probably never heard of, and I'm not sure what it is. But he would take the cup of the covenant, the red wine, and share it. And the table's a mess. And sometimes we come into church, and our table, me, myself, is in a mess. There's bits fallen off us, there's mess at home, there's mess in the car, there's mess in my life, there's mess in my finances, and we think, how can I go to that table? Well, you go to that table because when Christ stood there, that table was a mess. It wasn't pristine and clean. 
And out of that mess came what we now know as the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, communion, and some churches, the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. See, it doesn't matter if your table of life is a mess. If you know Jesus, come to the table, and from the, your mess, you will get his blessing. From your mess, you will get his encouragement. From your mess, you will get his fellowship. Even in the depths of your mess, you will be in koinonia with Jesus. People out there say, I'm not good enough to come to church. We should say, I'm not good enough to go out. But this morning, in a few minutes, we are going to come to a messy table of your life and receive the bounty and beauty and koinonia and fellowship of Jesus. There's no higher expression. There are some denominations in this country who have communion once a year because it's such a powerful symbol of the fellowship of sinful mankind with Jesus Christ. There's some churches who have a, a, a communion every week because they want to demonstrate how important this koinonia fellowship is for them and Jesus. I've got lots more I could say, time is not on my side. But are you beginning to get a little hint of what I'm trying to teach you this morning? Because this is a building where God's people come, reading God's Word that God may speak to them. Now, ignore my, ignore my voice, but hear to the inner voice of Jesus by His Spirit. Do you want to be in the depth of that fellowship? Do you want to know the glory of you and Jesus as best friends? Or are you not really bothered? It's the highest calling. I read in my daily reading yesterday that uh, from, from um, 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 Billy Graham that a man was a missionary in a certain country. And the government of his country said, we want you to be the ambassador there and we will give you 250,000 pounds a year to do it. And the missionary said, no, thank you. Okay, we'll give you 500,000 pounds a year. And the missionary said, no, thank you. Okay, we'll give you 750,000 pounds a year if you'll be our, our ambassador to that country. He said, there's nothing wrong with the money but the calling is too small. I've been called to serve the King of Kings. And you want me to be an ambassador, as it was then, for the Queen? The calling is too small. You are called by the King of Kings to live in fellowship with him. I'm going to stop there because I, I didn't check what time your service ends, and in one sense, it's not important as long as God is speaking to you. But we're going to sing a song. The song is entitled Agnes Day. Agnes, Lamb, Day, God, the Lamb of God. And that's the name that Jesus was given. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I want you to sit there 
and listen to it. It's a very reflective song. And it's, well, let's see what it says.
just bow our heads. You are worthy, Lamb of God. You are holy, my Savior. I worship you, I give thanks to you, I want to know you better, I want our relationship of fellowship to deepen, for only you are the Lamb of God. And scripture reminds us that on that night when Jesus was being betrayed, and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can sit around that messy Passover table, bring the mess of our lives and all the joys and wonders and say thank you that we can take bread and down the centuries with your disciples, we can say you are worthy Feed me, Lamb of God. So let's take the bread and share it. This reminds us of the body of Christ given for us. Amen. And scripture reminds us again that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, that means those who don't know Jesus personally, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. And in the same way, when supper the Passover had finished, Jesus took the cup of red wine, reminding them that this is the cup of the covenant, but now it's in his blood. And we drink with the saints down the centuries, declaring Jesus Christ died and Jesus Christ rose again and Jesus Christ ascended and will come again. So we drink, amen. And the disciples would have sat around that messy table, trying to work out what had been said to them. And in the years to come, they would sit around that table, waiting for Jesus to come back and praise God he hasn't come yet. For there are many people who still need to own him as Lord and Saviour. And so with the saints of old, we say together, 
the Lord's Prayer. As on the screen, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And with the church past, the church present and the church future, we have aligned ourselves with the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. And we close by asking Jesus to bless us as we go. What time do we finish, Karen? <laughs> when we finished, about five minutes ago normally, but it's okay. About five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, Jesus doesn't mind. So it, it really, and right. for that reason, it really doesn't matter. Sorry? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, if it doesn't matter then. No. <laughs> Let's not go that far. <laughs> I was trying to be serious, but okay. <laughs> Let's do something I was thinking about doing and didn't do because of time, but if it doesn't matter, that's good. Do you know, in the Anglican churches, they have a part of the service that's called passing the peace, where people go and shake hands and say things like, Tesco's bacon is cheaper than Sainsbury's, <laughs> and all these wonderful things. I don't want to do that. Instead, if you feel comfortable, and if you don't, just stay seated. If you feel comfortable, I'd like you just to stand and to turn to someone next, in front, behind, or whatever, and give them a hug and say, God bless you. Nothing more than that. God bless you. If you feel able to do that, would you stand, please? And if you don't feel able and comfortable, just stay seated. So those who feel comfortable, please stand. There's no pressure. There's no pressure. And give, give somebody next to you a hug and simply say, God bless you. Make sure the one that doesn't get a hug. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a wonderful sight. Thank you. It's a visible sign of fellowship. So let's close with that song of blessing. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We stand and sing.
all God's people said? Amen. 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 Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a great week.